Welcome back to In Light of the Gospel. We're at episode 52 now. I'll be speaking with Isaac Buchert. I've known Isaac for a long, long time. I was surprised how long I actually was familiar with him. But uh, one of the things I want to share about today's episode in particular, but in general with all of these episodes when I'm talking to people, something almost like a confession of mine is that it's easy to assume things about people or to think that maybe you kind of know where they stand or maybe to be disinterested sometimes. And I, I, I'm not saying I was disinterested in Isaac. We just hadn't had that much to do with one another. And he's somewhat of an unassuming guy. He's just an ordinary guy like I am. He does his job. He does it well, from what I understand. Works hard, has a great family. And we've had slight interactions here and there through the years. But then you sit down with a guy and you actually ask real questions, trying to get to know him. And you're just blown away. Like, this guy's got real passion. He has real joy. He has a real deep thought about the gospel. And it shouldn't surprise me. That's the part that I'm kind of confessing. Like, what am I thinking? It was I Did I think that somehow he didn't have real deep thoughts? It's silly of me. But I hope that you find the same thing. You listen to a guy like Isaac, just an ordinary bricklayer, ordinary guy like most of us are, probably all of us, and yet he thinks deeply about Jesus. The, the fact that Jesus suffered and died for him is meaningful. And he's going to be one of those that lives on for eternity. What a blessing. What a joy to be able to sit down with another human being that's an individual that will live on forever, that has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, and to have a conversation, to get to know them. You know, I actually think that I know God better because I know Isaac better. There was a, uh, I think it was C.S. Lewis and some friends of his. One of them had died. They spent a lot of time together. I want, I, don't quote me on this. I don't know for sure. There was like four or five of them that would get together every week and have chats about things. And one of them passed away. And in, in one guy's mind, he was thinking, well, maybe now I'll have more opportunity to speak with this guy on a deeper level. But the fact was that by having this one guy missing, I now know that guy less. And so you and I can teach each other a whole lot about God. So this podcast has taught me that. Hopefully it will teach you the same thing. Next time you get together with one of your buddies, don't keep it surface level. Ask them some real questions. See what makes them tick. You're going to be pleasantly surprised, and I think you'll be very edified by it. So God bless you for tuning in. appreciate you coming around. Subscribe to the channel if you can. If you can like the video or share it with some friends, that's always appreciated. And I just really uh, enjoy having you guys tuning in. Thanks again. time we probably met you said you were probably about 14 years old yeah that was when the old colony split happened and mr redicop started that that new church i wasn't saved yet either i just wanted something more i was searching and, and trying to find some kind of truth mm -hmm. and then this big split happened and it just opened the doors for me where all of a sudden now i'm allowed to listen to things that are not old colony you right. know you would and have been married already at that point right just barely yeah okay. so mr redicop performed our wedding at Old Colony, okay, and then a year later, or within that year, he mm. left. Oh wow! So, okay, yeah. So yeah, a lot of change in a short period of time, getting married, and then that. Yep. Okay. And same for you. You're 14 years old. Pretty formative years. Yeah, yeah. So I I had uh, just recently started hanging out with a group of guys. Um, I, I don't know how it was for you, but w at what age did you start hanging out with your friends as opposed to always going with your parents wherever they well, went on I the weekend? Had, I had a best friend from early, early childhood. Like We have pictures of us in diapers together. Me oh, and wow. Willie, Willie Simons, okay, yeah. Pete's brother. Yep. And so whenever I was hanging out with friends, it was usually him oh, okay. or a couple other guys, but he wouldn't be involved. And so from pretty early on, my parents would go there regularly. And then mm -hmm. probably 13, 13, 14 years old, I'd go to his house. Oh, okay. But... It, I mean, not that that was necessarily always safe. We did things we shouldn't have. Right. But some people got dropped off at the bunch, right? Where yeah. Where there's like dozens and dozens of 14, 15, 16-year-olds and then 18-year-olds and 20-year-olds who are bringing alcohol and all that. Right, right. So I didn't ever get into that kind of crowd. Okay. Yeah, neither did I. Um, no. Kind of spared from it, eh? Uh, to, to a degree. I mean, like the group of friends that I was with, we kind of longingly looked at that thinking, oh, it'd be cool, right? But mm -hmm. uh, no, as far as... My upbringing, or um, my early teenage years, I, I started hanging out around a, a group of guys, probably late 13 and then a 14-year-old, uh, getting dropped off with friends, and it was a great time. 
But right around that same time as when my when my dad got saved and they started going to Red Cops Church and there was just, you know, I think a genuine revival that happened right around that time. Yeah. A lot of people were being awakened to, to the gospel and and uh, and I for me, knowing my dad and seeing the transformation, like I, even at that young age, I felt anyway, this is not just a fad and it's not just mm. uh, him trying to compensate for for moral failings you know how sometimes people will have they'll try to be overzealous yeah. morally to, to compensate for a for a spiritual need and, and i i sense that this wasn't that this was a genuine genuine conversion he didn't just get religious he got joyful and exactly studious he was looking into the scriptures oh yeah like i can remember uh like my, my dad's i guess have been a little bit different from the traditional mennonite man of his age uh than than what i'm used to maybe mm -hmm. from my friend groups in that um i think he he was uh he was curious uh maybe not always about uh the bible or about god but he he would read mm -hmm. um i remember visiting my grandparents in mexico and uh, i remember this kind of I, I laugh about it now but at the time i thought it was uh kind of hypocritical and, and i'm some assumptions on my part here my dad would uh, sometimes say something. I used to buy these magazines, and uh, I got the feeling, and I think my dad even mentioned it once, he thought it was a waste of money, me buying these magazines. Uh, anything from ATVing, off-roading, mm -hmm. uh, car magazines, and things like that. And I got the sense that he thought it was a waste of money. And then <clears throat> we went to visit my grandparents in Mexico, and I remember finding a, a box full of popular science magazines in his old room I'm in thinking, Mexico in Mexico it, they're all in Spanish obviously hmm. and I'm like the odds that these are my grandpa's are pretty slim it could <laughs> be but maybe you know I just thought but he's reading them obviously. interesting yeah and he's not many young Mennonite boys would be intrigued by science and enough to, to look at magazines right yeah right so so my impression was that like he enjoyed reading uh, I knew that he was was could read Spanish mm -hmm. uh, and that he um, he, he, his English was already pretty good, uh, and he was reading English. But when he got saved, um, I remember him after work coming home, and he would be in his room, door shut, and, and it wasn't a secret what he was doing. He was reading. He, and it was his an effort to get to know the Bible yeah. better and, and time in prayer. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah and Before that, what was your child, childhood like then? I mean, if there, there was quite a transformation in him. I don't need to know all the details about him, but like, right. was it... Yeah, um, uh, you know, I think, like, I, I enjoyed my childhood. I don't have any, like, terrible memories or, or, or things that I look back on and think, wow, like, we had it rough. Yeah. I mean, uh, kids will always longingly look at what other families have and wish for the same thing. Oh, but yeah. But, but I, I, I learned in my older years, there was other families looking at us having the same feelings, right? For sure. And so... Um, uh, yeah, it was pleasant. We we had a good relationship. Uh, Grew up almost almost entirely in Canada. Yeah, I was two when we moved to Canada. Okay. Uh, so I I have no memory of Mexico other than yeah. visiting, uh, except for this one still shot memory that I th I'm pretty sure is more than just me looking at a picture and thinking I was there, where I was sitting in the driveway at my parents' house, uh, the one that they lived at last before moving to Canada. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my memories are all of Canada otherwise. Interesting. That's weird how that kind of works, right? I know my brother-in-law, Henry, he talks about uh, remembering a funeral when he was two years old yeah. in Mexico. And it's like, there's no way a two-year-old remembers it. But he points out things that he remembers that, mm -hmm. that weren't on pictures. Like right. somehow he recalled something from a super early age, right? Right. So you never know. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, I'm open to the thought that maybe I've seen a picture and I place myself there mentally. Yeah. But but the things I described, my mom's like, yeah, like we did live in a pink house. Like, how would you have remembered that? And mm. I'm like, I don't know. I, cool. It's it's just there. So you were educated here. You went to, you know, through through high school and everything. Uh, so I'm a high school dropout actually. Yeah. But but yeah, I went uh, uh, grade one to through to grade ten. Uh, uh, my last two years, my high school years hardly count. I I skipped so much school because of work. Uh, partially that when I wasn't working, I, I, f I felt like I was so far behind. There was no motivation to, to apply myself to my I studies, see. um, which is sad. I, 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 I love learning now. Mm -hmm. 
my wife actually teases me. But when we first got married, more so, she would say like, "Why are you watching a video on that? Like, who cares? Mm -hmm. Like, why why do you want to know <laughs> what's going on in that part of the world, or or why do you want to know how that works? It has yeah. nothing to do with anything that you're involved in." I'm like, "I'm curious. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I it was brought up at work today, or I seen I seen an article about it, and and my mind's like." How does that work? Yeah. I'm going to find out. Whether it's how some mechanical thing works or yeah. some news across the world. That's interesting. Yeah. I found, too, that during school years, I just couldn't give a care. Like, yeah. I had the mental capacity to be able to excel at school, I think, like mm -hmm. like a lot of us could have. Yeah. But just didn't apply myself at all. Just barely got passing grades in those right. classes. Dropped out grade 10. Just okay. didn't care. Mm -hmm. And then when I became a Christian at 21, all of a sudden it's like, man, I wish I could re-educate myself. Right. There's so much I want to learn. Yeah. And and. It's, it's funny how, like, it, it, it almost comes, uh, like, it's a common trait. Like, I see that commonly among those, like, people that get saved. They, there's there's a desire and an appetite for for understanding and for learning. Yeah, not even just Bible necessarily. Right, That for right. sure, but history and In geography. In general, yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 That's cool. So, you after, after you dropped out, you kept learning then, or was it more just work and hanging out uh for for a while it was work and hanging out uh i was i was with uh, i had a girlfriend at the time and so uh we were together and and so actually uh our relationship kind of kept me from a lot of those pitfalls hanging out with uh with with the the party crowd and so on mm -hmm. uh just as we started get, uh, going out and spending more time together and I got my license and now we were more independent we could do what we wanted we didn't always have to just hang out at, like we started going out at a quite a young age before I could drive and so we were together when all our, when our friend group was together kind of thing right when I started driving now we could do whatever we wanted and my friends that weren't seeing somebody they started going more into the party crowd and mm, so, so that spared you from that it did yeah yeah so uh, I mean, it had uh, it had other it had other issues, mm -hmm. but uh, it spared me from from you know getting into getting addicted to all kinds of substances, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, because hmm. I just wasn't. So you never drank, smoked, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, drinking, yes, we did that actually at a fairly young age already in our friend group. We had a uh, one of our friends, his older brother was. Uh, he would supply us with with booze, I and see. so uh, we were here. Those older brothers. I know, right? So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I before I had my license, even I totaled a vehicle under oh. the influ I was under the influence. Um, yeah, it was an uh, interesting situation, but yeah, we were at a friend's house. Um, f friend's brother supplied us with some beer. We paid him, obviously. He wasn't doing this for free, uh, and so. We had we had some drinks. His parents left. We decided, hey, why don't we? I don't even know whose idea it was now, but I remember somebody saying, why don't we take your dad's farm truck oh, out yeah. down that dirt road and, and and have some fun? And so we did. Uh, six of us piled into the this truck, and we yeah decided to have some fun. And I happened to be behind the wheel when uh, when I lost control and smashed the truck, totaled it. Oh man. Yeah. Everybody was okay. Uh, minor, minor injuries, bruises, things yeah. like that. I think one of the guy's glasses broke. Uh, could have been pretty bad. It could have been, yeah, yeah. So many little, little things that if if one little thing would have been different, life could be such a different scenario. Eh? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So when your dad started seeking truth and got saved, as you say, mm -hmm. you were fourteen. It didn't immediately inspire you to look into faith more, or. Well, see, I just getting into this friend group, for me, I didn't, uh, like, I enjoyed hanging out with my friends. So for me, that, those were two separate worlds, and I I didn't want to forsake my friends. Like None I was, of them came to Red Cops? No, uh, all of them, at least, uh, yeah, all, all of their parents and the, 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 their families, they all were old colony still. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, we just never talked about it at work, or at sorry, not at work, but but when we were together. Yeah. In passing, it got mentioned a few times, uh, and sometimes I felt like maybe they wanted to avoid the topic. Maybe they thought, you know, hey, he goes to that church, like don't like, don't rock the boat. We don't yeah. want him bringing anything up, right? Kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. I kind of got the the feeling every now and then, but um, but uh, it, it didn't get 
with the stuff that was going on at church, like you mm-hmm. mentioned before, it seemed like there was a genuine revival there. I often look back to those people, mm-hmm. like there's a good 20 or more people that I can think of mm-hmm. that I'm sure if we th- sat down and started listing them, yeah. who back then got saved and today are faithful Christians. Right. Like not, they weren't just these little part-time flare-ups and then they d- dropped off the map. Like so right. many of them even married now with kids and right. uh, living a, a, a life that's productive and fruitful and stuff. Like right. Something really did happen there. Was mm-hmm. that... Did that stirring there affect you at all, or did you more or less ignore that? Oh, oh, it did. Uh, yeah, I like my brothers and I. We all we hated going to church uh, because before uh, what we were used to from church, uh, because of a, a little bit of a lack of understanding, uh, language barrier. Like I can understand Low German uh, decently, uh, but. So a lot of the preaching, like at least when the scripture was quoted, it was high German, mm-hmm. and, and and we kind of could easily tune out in church. Yeah, I was just gonna say you can just turn it down. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now when we started uh, started attending uh, Redicop and 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 I think when there's uh, a, a group of people, when there's that 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 zeal, when someone's newly saved, and I think there was a lot of that. There's a group of people that were just you know genuinely thirsty and hungry for God, seeking for God. Uh, I think that that unintentionally kind of, for me anyway, brought conviction on me. I was like, I, like, I don't desire God, and I felt like there's something wrong with that. And, mm-hmm. and, I, and I, I think that's a good, that yeah. was a good feeling for me to have. But that made me uncomfortable and, uncomfortable and, and hate being around those people. So it's the, the moment, and our parents made a rule, you had to stay, in, like church was not an option, you were going. And so we would be in church, and I would think it was uh, the moment the singing was done, we were at the door. Out the door, yeah. yeah and we were waiting in the vehicle, waiting to go home, because we wanted mm. to hang out with our friends, right? Um, and, p- and part of it, for me at least, was not just wanting to go with, visit with my friends. I, I was under conviction, like heavy. Yeah. Uh, get out of that environment. Exactly, yeah. You you get away from the things that kind of put pressure on it, that yeah. pinpoint issues. What if somebody asks me a question? Well, that was the biggest fear of mine. <laughs> I was I was terrified of, of personal uh, like interaction. I didn't yeah. want anybody to poke a, into my life and try to try to you know uncover sin in my life. Right? Yeah. Or even back then, it was really common for people just to say, "Hey, are you born again? Yeah, or, right. Are you a Christian yet?" And then it's like, what do you mean? We're at church. Of course I'm a Christian. What like, what do you expect, right? Well, but, actually, I, I would not have considered myself a Christian. No? I would have said, no, I'm not a Christian. Hmm. Like, I knew that. And I was, like, I... I, 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 I yeah, I, I guess I don't... I don't know how exactly to explain it, but I didn't feel the need to, to pretend okay. that I was. Because I knew I wasn't. And that saying I was didn't make a difference but even if somebody asked that question then you have to have the conversation or yeah well the, yeah the conversation I would have been very uncomfortable with yeah yeah hmm did you ever come to that youth group that was there then no, no. okay so yeah uh, yeah there was I don't know how long it was when 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 you left but uh, but there was that time when there was a good portion of the the, the church that kind of split off and they started meeting in Brownsville yeah it was shortly after that when I when I got saved. I see. Um, and then I started coming around to well, the, I don't even think the youth really existed. And all the youth that was there at that time, they were all, they kind of just joined with the lighthouse youth. Yeah. And so, for me, that uh, that's just what I did. Okay. I would be in church. Uh, well, the, at that time, they were meeting at the community center in Eden, mm-hmm. which is now this the general store, and. Uh, be in, in church there on Sunday morning, and then afterwards we would uh, hang out with, hang out with the youth at Lighthouse. Okay. And Martin Newfield was there too at that time still. Yeah. yeah. I see. Interesting. Yeah, I was one of the youth leaders at Redicops. Me oh, okay. and Henry Harder. Yes. Yeah. Brand new Christian. I shouldn't have been leading youth, but uh-huh. I was excited and wanting to share constantly. And right. And then uh, we had some some issues with with the leadership there, right? Mm-hmm. And then I ended up going to Vienna Church. Right. And um, Henry Harder did also. Right. So I don't know what happened to the youth group after. I think someone else took over, and then they they also were part of um, that Friends of Jesus choir was oh, going yes. on at the time with yep. the uh, oh what were those sisters? I heard a lot about them, but I was yeah, never you part never of were it. part of it. No, okay. I went once. We were married already, and I went there. Speaking of which, I was sitting beside somebody at that one of those uh, choir practices, 
And I turned to him, and he was young, probably 17, 18 years old, and I asked him, so are you, are you a Christian yet? Mm -hmm. And he didn't know what to do. He stumbled all over his words. And mm -hmm. I heard f through the grapevine a few weeks later that he got saved. Oh, wow. And he said it was just that simple question that had just so, you know, changed his thinking where he's mm. like, oh, I don't know if I am. I don't know. And that started the ball rolling. Right, right. So it's interesting awesome. how that works. But then after there was that split and the Brownsville group started, mm -hmm. we started coming regularly to visit. Oh, okay. We were still at Vienna for another year or two or something like that okay once they moved to springfield then we started coming there full time oh, okay. and it felt to us kind of like home right like we knew all these people right right yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah so uh, and, and the funny thing is so i was uh i was just just born again just saved and then i think I, or, or even just before that uh, i was asked to lead song at uh at redicops, at redicops yeah mm -hmm. And and so for me, I, I had by now already had a year and a bit where I was just really heavy under conviction of sin and God was trying to get a hold of me. Um, I was in a relationship with this girl and just feeling like I, I, we actually got engaged. Oh, wow. And, 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 that, and that came to naught. But, uh, but part of that, the reasoning for that was I was just trying to do what I thought would give me favor with God. Mm. That nagging, that, that like clear my conscience. I, I was trying to do things that would, that I thought were good, and maybe this, maybe this will clear my conscience. Maybe this, like, because yeah. I knew, I knew I was still struggling with sin, and that, and that, you know, I wasn't trusting Christ for, uh, for His saving blood to, were you to cleanse me. Were you avoiding the gospel, or did you just not fully comprehend it yet? It hadn't really hit home. That's a good question. I I don't know how I, how I'd exactly explain that. I think I was still trying. I was still trying to work for my salvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, there obviously wasn't an understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Because for me it was okay today. I remember thinking this waking up in the morning. Today I'm going to do better. Yeah. To to, to today's the day. Today I'm I, I'm going to please God today. And then and I, I remember laying down again at night thinking, how how can anybody do this? Hmm. And yeah, I remember hating going to sleep because that's when you're alone and quiet. And yep. You're left to your thoughts. All the enjoyment and excitement of the day or the weekend is now at a, at a close, and there's mm -hmm. nothing right now that's interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So then, uh, how did the gospel gospel finally penetrate? What was the catalyst there? Well, for me, I I think a lot of people because I wasn't part of the party scene, uh, I and and wanting to so. Wanting to please God naturally meant I did things that, that you know, a bad boy doesn't do, right? Um, I participated when we were singing, when we'd sing hymns in school. I would, I would read, I would put up my hand. To, we went, at this time, we were going to the Walsingham Christian School. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would volunteer to, to read passages. And, uh, you know, I didn't shy away from those kinds of things. And on the outside, sometimes that looks like somebody that's, you know, I was just genuine. say, all appearances, they might think you were a Christian. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. And so, but inside, those those actions were motivated by a desire, by the by the belief that, that I'm going to satisfy God by this these actions. Right? Interesting. Um, and so, I was happy with, with that, that people thought of me as being a, you know, I don't know if a good guy, but but uh, one of the better ones anyway, yeah. right? Because certainly there was things in my past that people knew about. Like I, I I was quite a rambunctious kid when I was you know fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Like we we did a lot of things that that I'm sure we we were known for that. Or even the truck accident, I'm sure got you know yeah. people heard, right? Yeah, right. And there's a famous saying that my friends and I used for a long time after that. His mom. So the the family whose truck it was uh, when. When they found out about it, they, they had us pile in their truck. And we went back to the scene, and his mom turned to his dad. And without looking at me, she knew I was driving. She's like, this is what the devil does. And so for a while after that, oh, that was that struck me. I, I felt I, I, I felt terrible, and that just made it ten times worse. Interesting. But afterwards, that became a joke to us. This, this is, is what the devil, devil does, right? Mm. And so um, a few years later, then uh, as I'm trying to please God, you know, that... that started that like that was heavy on my heart right yeah. and i wanted to erase that i wanted to i wanted to be a good guy i wanted to be born again but i wanted to do it in a way i wanted to do it on my own terms kind yeah. of, right? and even um 
to think that the devil would get that involved, it's like it's a little bit scary after yeah. you take it seriously, right? Exactly. Yep. And she was recognizing that the devil's trying to destroy our family, trying to mm -hmm. wreak havoc on our young people, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Interesting. So there you're under deep conviction and you're trying to search for the truth. And was there like a moment when you saw the gospel for, for what it was? Yeah, actually, um, so uh, being in the, the, the relationship with this girl, um, uh, having been in, we were already engaged, uh, but um, her parents found out about some stuff that we had done. And uh, I just remember everything, like I, uh, everything crashing down on me. Like people know I'm not a good guy. Yeah, I see. Uh, you know the the cat's out of the bag. You know, and, and it's just a moment of surrender. And I knew that uh, that you know I've been trying for about two years now to please God and just feeling terrible every night. Uh, I, I I've got to change. Like I got to change what I'm doing. There's got to be a different way. How are these people living with? With joy in their heart, like I, and, and so in my mind, I don't know how I how I knew this, but I knew that there was a Bible study, a youth Bible study at the Lighthouse Gospel Church. Okay. And uh, on Tuesday nights, I think it was uh, a Monday night where, where, uh, where my girlfriend told me that hey, uh, my dad's not happy. He found out what we're doing, kind of thing, right? And I just you know had a terrible night the next day I'm like you know I, I know this Bible study I'm gonna go um, and so I went and, and funny enough your brother Joe was there okay he, he, he went he went often I think he went all yep. the time pretty much and so um, after the Bible study the the youth leader always had uh, everyone break or not always but most of the time had everybody break up into small group or just pair up with one other person and uh, specifically pray for one another and for me like Joe was the only guy I knew there that I remember now. And so I just, I right away. Uh, Somebody familiar. Yeah, right. And so I, I, I went straight to him and, uh, and uh, rather than trying to conceal, to conceal my life and just put on this aura of being a good guy, I just poured everything out to him. I'm like, I'm not a good guy. Like, I, I, how do you, how, how do you get born again? And I remember just asking him very plainly, like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to be a Christian. Right and uh, he said, he, I remember he said to me, he's like, why, why don't, why don't you and I just get together and why don't we explore that? Let's let's look into the Bible and see what the Bible has to say. And so then, uh, we I started meeting with him one on one at your parents' house. Okay. And I feel uh, like this is kind of ringing a bell. But yeah. I, I didn't remember until now. Yeah. Yeah. So so he he uh, we I remember we started going through the Book of Hebrews. Okay. Yeah. And so. To this day, like I have a fondness when I when I read the book of I Hebrews. I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, and and it's a per I think it's a perfect book, uh, just contrasting the old way versus the new Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially once you get to nine and ten, the yeah. climax of that book. So right? when when we were getting together, we actually never made it to that chapter. Okay. But uh, but even just the first few chapters. Yeah, there's um, plenty there. Jesus is better than Moses. Yeah. Better than angels. Yeah. Exactly. How much better is the builder of the house than the house itself, right? Amen. And so, so yeah, that 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 is the turning point. I don't. I can't say a specific day, but that right. when when Joe and I were meeting together privately, uh, going through the scriptures, that's that's where the turning. Your point your came. attention got taken off of yourself and placed on the one who can say right. So exactly. it's no longer about me trying to gain favor or trying to ease my conscience. Mm -hmm. There was a man who came, right? Yeah. Yeah. The captain of our salvation. Exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I, I don't know if I ever told Joe uh, specifically. How much of an impact that actually yeah. had. Eh? Yeah. Well, he'll hear it now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thanks, Joe. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, so liberation, mm -hmm. how else would you describe that period of time? Uh, well, it, it, There was it, still turmoil with whatever you were going through, obviously. Yeah, and, but the funny thing is, like... Um, It it uh, yeah it, it was it was hard like I would I would admit it was hard but but I I was so happy that that this this burden of guilt was gone mm -hmm. like um, it might sound kind of cliche but like Paul said uh, like I count all these things uh, like or sorry like the, the the trials we face are are nothing compared to the yeah. to the the glory that shall be revealed yeah, in us right. and I just remember thinking like 
I can handle this. Like knowing knowing that I am that I am saved, I, I can handle all the rest of this. Like yeah, it's it's difficult. I don't know how I'm gonna f sort through it, but but I just remember thinking that uh, like for that that burden I was I was carrying is gone. So oh, man. let it come what may come. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a night and day difference. I think my parents noticed it right away. I can imagine. My brothers. You were still attending Rite of Cops Church at the time. Yeah, or? yeah. I was there for a while yet, uh, maybe a year and a bit. And then just decided to go to Lighthouse full time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, obviously things didn't work out with this girl. Yeah. No. Her her parents were very opposed to uh, her leaving their church. They were still part of the old colony. Um, and for me, <laughs> I I had wanted to make it work. Uh, like I I generally was like very fond of her. I I I I loved her, and so I. Uh, I started attending, uh, I think I attended twice with her at, at uh, Walsingham, and I just remember thinking to myself, this is not good for me as a young Christian. Like, um, I, I think I'm better off, you know, I, I'm better off attending where where I have uh, a, st a strong Christian teaching. teaching. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, so I told her, like, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't. Uh, if if your if your family is not okay with you leaving, then maybe for the time being that we should just call this off. Like, uh, and hopefully your parents will come around, or especially her dad. Yeah. Was, and that's how I couched it. That's how, what I told her. And and for me, I I, I was fully convinced that it was only going to be a short time. Um, but it ended up obviously being indefinitely. She she wasn't willing also to go against her parents in that regard. Well, I think she probably would have. Yeah, she probably would have, but. Uh, but I, I, the, the, I didn't want to disrespect her parents. I wanted to go with her parents' blessing. And so mm -hmm. for me, that just made the most sense. And I think that's God's leading. Well, I mean, this is probably a slightly uncomfortable topic to discuss. Uh, you know, it, it is, yeah. Having, being happily married now. Yeah, it, but it is. there's <laughs> so many lessons in that, right? Mm -hmm. So many young people that listen to this, perhaps even, mm -hmm. who are dating and they think, well, I have to be with this person. The thing is, until you have said your vows... Mm -hmm. Until you've promised your life to one another, there is still options. Right. Once you have made a vow, there isn't. Right. right. There, there is. A, there's something very significant about that. There's, that's the reason we should wait until our vows to actually make the the marriage official. Right. The right. whole sexual union part yeah. of that all should wait until we have committed our lives one to another. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you didn't go about it the right way. No. But God is gracious, and He yeah. worked things out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you broke it off, started attending Lighthouse, and getting into the youth there, and all that. Yeah, yeah, just uh, voraciously reading uh, the scriptures, listening to uh, sermons online. I remember mm. sermon audio was a huge thing. Oh, yeah. Um, listening to guys like Paul Washer, uh, Leonard Ravenhill, yep. just getting fired up. Uh, started uh, going to London with uh, the youth from Vienna, doing street oh, witnessing. that's right. Yeah, and so, so I would be at, uh, like, just, just getting everything I could, kind of, right? Um, Tuesday night Bible studies, and I forget, I think it was Friday nights where the youth went to London, right? Yeah. To, to Street Witness, I was doing that. I must have been there with you a few times, because I would go out with the youth a lot of times, too. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you were there twice, once for sure, probably twice when I went. I didn't go every every Friday, mm -hmm. but uh, I think they only did in the, in the winter months, right? Or was it the summer too? It was often a little bit cold, wasn't it? But yeah. I don't remember for sure now. It was uh, on and off, right? Somebody would get really excited about street evangelism and mm -hmm. ministry, and then it would inspire a few, and then it would kind of taper off. And right, yeah. yeah. And uh, one of the one of the guys from from Lighthouse, Dave Friesen, you probably know. I was just gonna bring him up in the back of my mind. I was already thinking because I saw him on Sunday at, yeah. at Beacon there, and he was really passionate about sharing the gospel. Yeah, and so if if it wasn't happening in uh, London with uh, the Vienna youth, then then he would be in Tilsonburg doing the same thing, and I would I would join him sometimes. Wow. Yeah, and so it was. A well, good that's time. quite a step to take, right? To to first of all recognize, okay, I'm saved. The gospel made a difference in my life, mm -hmm. but to actually go approach a stranger on the street. Yeah. It takes a kind of uh, courage and confidence that's hard to get past. Most guys are like, I just couldn't do it. There's no way. Right? Yeah, and, and see, that's where I feel like I'm a little weird. Uh, I found it almost more difficult to tell my brothers or my family okay. or my coworkers talking about it to them. I, I, I almost felt more nervous there than I did with I, a complete stranger. That makes a kind of sense. Yeah, because you don't know this person. You never see them again, maybe. Uh, potentially, yeah, right? Like, don't get me wrong, I was still nervous. Mm -hmm. And I remember the, the beginning of the night, getting out of the vehicle, just thinking, 
oh man and like shivering thinking yeah. not because of the cold but you're thinking who who am i going to encounter like what if they get upset but yeah. but that desire to share the gospel just kind of overrid those feelings and and then once you get into once you've shared with one or two people that kind of just goes away right yeah and if you can approach people in a you know a cordial manner where you're not yelling at them or preaching at them necessarily mm-hmm. you're just engaging in small talk or a, a quick question or two and see if they'll stop and chat then it's yeah, yeah it's not like you're you know messing up their day necessarily exactly yeah and, and you're not uh you generally don't get into really deep theological debates either out on the street sometimes you do on, yeah. on one occasion we did some christians that come out or something yeah i remember i remember there it was a it, it was a a reformed man that uh, we were passing out tracks and he said uh, to us the one time it was Dave and I in Tilsmerd I'll take your track but I'm uh, like we hadn't even looked into it yet but I guess he already knew because we were witnessing mm-hmm. what uh, that we were theologically different at least on, on soteriology he said uh, but I but I already know that I'm, I don't agree with what's in here and I said, oh and then he went on to explain Calvinism and okay. and, uh, and and for me that was my first time ever hearing that term and, and yeah. actually having that laid out for me and I just remember thinking that's not how I came to Jesus like I and I I, I just so it I, I was a young Christian and uh, and it showed at that that interaction I, I started getting a little bit louder confrontational and, yeah like I felt like my faith was being attacked now uh, mm-hmm. obviously that's different now I can I can disagree with somebody theologically and not feel that way but yeah but at the, in the moment I just remember the feeling attacked and um, and Dave Friesen uh, very wisely sort of just drew the conversation to a close and moved on. And I think it wasn't healthy for those walking by hearing this. Do you guys yeah, arguing? Because right. that is often one of the things that is a drawback for people outside of the Christian faith, right? They're like, the Christians just fight with each other all the time, right? All yeah, the they can't agree. Different theologies and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I looked into a lot of that kind of stuff too, especially Calvinism, and it really irked me and rubbed me the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And even to this day, I strongly disagree with a lot of the points. At the same mm-hmm. time, so many of the preachers that I get so much benefit from that teach the gospel well, that teach mm-hmm. the Bible well, that mm-hmm. teach family and stuff like that well, yeah. are Calvinist at the core, right? So yeah, it's, and and that's a mark of uh, uh, maturity, I think, in a believer's life, where where they can recognize that uh, I'm. The, the scriptures, in my mind, lead me to a different conclusion, but I I, I, I recognize that their heart is to serve the Lord, mm-hmm. that they they don't they're not malicious towards me, and that we can still worship God together. Yeah. And, and especially this, when their emphasis and their focus is Christ on the cross and exactly. the death, burial, and resurrection, it's like yeah, yeah. In my younger years, I, I I would have said no way, you can't. Unity means no disagreements, uh-huh. right? And and I don't believe that anymore. No, right? interesting. So that went on for a couple of years, doing the street stuff on and off, and yep. uh, engaging with people in evangelism. Mm-hmm. You met your wife during that period. Yeah. So they, her family was attending Lighthouse. Uh, she was, uh, she was uh, in the youth. She's she's a couple of years younger than me, um, but I think we we both came to Christ right around the same time. Um, and uh, I remember when we first met. It was at a youth event. It wasn't at church, but it was at a youth event. We were going to drive up to. Dunville, I think, to, to visit a fr- friends of the church that lived out in Dunville. Yeah. And so we were going to carpool, and we all carpooled into this uh, into the back of this car, and there's me and my wife and her sister, I believe. And my upbringing was, was I guess you could say, quite conservative, and having gone to the school I went to, their curriculum was, was made by conservative, conservative Mennonites. Conservative Mennonites, yeah. Right, so the dress, like my impression of a Christian's dress was uh, was very conservative, and so I remember thinking, she can't be a Christian. She's wearing pants. <laughs> right? uh, and, and, you know, so I, I was thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to get it out of her. I asked her if she was born again. She said, yeah. And I asked her for a testimony. Like, I'm going to prove it. You yeah. know, I was on this mission. I'm going to prove it to her that she's not a Christian. Um, that was our first interaction. I, I don't see. think she. I don't think she got that impression from me, thankfully. Do you remember what impression you walked away with after hearing her testimony? I'm like, wow, she she sounds genuine. She seems like she genuinely believes. Yeah. Even yeah. without a skirt on. I know, exactly, right? That's so <laughs> weird. Um, yeah, and then we ended up serving uh, in in the church in different uh, capacities alongside each other. And so uh, we ended up getting together um, after a couple of years of that, not even not even considering her. I, I had never considered her 
until like maybe two or three years after wow. being together in the youth and serving together on the young teens, teaching young teens. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimate way, guys. Yeah. Want to meet a girl? Get serving in the church. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you find others that are serving in the church. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, if your motive is to find somebody, then then maybe it's tricky. you're going to jump the gun too soon. Yeah. But if your motive is just to serve, yeah. you're going to expose yourself to those people that are that they have the same heart and then you're going to hopefully you can see that's, and capture those. That's kind of uh, akin to the idea of giving money to God or to the church in order to get back. Right. Because you often will. Right. People who give a lot, there there seems like all of a sudden they get money coming their way, almost effortlessly. Right. But if you give money to try to get money from God, then it's mm -hmm. you can't play games with Him, right? Right. And so the same way, right? Like mm -hmm. serve God because you want to serve God, but that might very well be the best place to find someone else who also have a ser has a servant's heart and stuff. Exactly. Like. Yeah. So I worked with a guy years ago. He went through a nasty divorce, and he knew that I was a Christian. And he goes to me the one day we were, we were driving somewhere together. He said, you know what, Isaac, I, I should just go to church and find myself a girl there. And he wasn't a Christian. And I told him, no, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, don't do that. That's not the way. Like, yeah. you, 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 but if you want a one that's going to, you know, cook yeah. and clean and take care of herself and right. serve you well, then maybe that's the place. Yeah. Well, he wasn't a Christian, no, right? Exactly. So, so my, my, my reasoning was like, don't go troll in the church for, for, for young girls and, and possibly lead them into a life that they're going to regret, right? You yeah. need to get born again first. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So a few years after that, you guys uh, finally made a connection mm -hmm. on a more than just a level of serving together. Yeah, so I, I wanted, like I knew marriage was in the future for me, at least that's what I desired. And How I felt, old were you now? Uh, I was, uh, when we got married, I was 22. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, had, I had gone to be in Veracruz for three months as a 21-year-old. I, I had a great time there, and I, I, I was convinced that missions was going to be where God took me. Okay. Uh, when I got back. That I was think, where Henry Wall is? Exactly, yeah, yeah in, in Veracruz there, way up on. Um, when I got back, my life was, I was kind of thinking, what am I going to do with myself? I kind of felt like I didn't know where, where to go. Um, and after a few months, maybe three or four months, uh, marriage really started weighing heavy on me. I thought, you know what? Uh, I'd love to, I'd love to be with somebody like mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to have a companion in life and um, and so uh, I I, re I remember asking my dad I was like dad I, I'm I'm considering this girl and uh, and I want to know what you think I, I don't know if I had I had too uh, I think I had romanticized the whole finding a spouse process a bit too much and so mm -hmm. you know the idea of finding the one that was pretty common yeah yeah and so I remember asking my dad about it and uh, wanting some you know deep insight and he asked me just a few simple questions like what well, uh, is she a Christian and I said yeah he's like is she you know faithful serving Christ and I said yeah like, then what are you waiting for yeah and, I'm, <laughs> I, and for me that was just too simple yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, Dad, you're no help. I'm going to go find uh, someone more spiritual. Yeah, right. That's what I thought, right? But uh, but she was already on my mind. And so I think I had asked you, too. I th that was when you built your house in Vienna. Okay. Yeah. Right around that time. And I, I think I remember I talked to you about, I didn't mention that specific person. Um, I was very guarded with that outside of my family. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, we, it became clear and I approached her dad and it wasn't, wasn't long after that we were married. Nice. No, that's exciting. God is uh, is super gracious, eh? When mm -hmm. you think about the past that you could have, you know, all the stuff that could have been. Right. And how, you know, there may be a big heartbreak and the actual hurt leaving that or former relationship. And then yeah, just it was, yeah. faithfully serving God for a few years, mm -hmm. staying free from sin and walking faithful. And, mm -hmm. and then God provides something completely different. Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I just, I remember thinking to myself, Lord, it hurt at the time, but I'm so glad that I am where I am now. Like I, I see your hand guiding me. Mm -hmm. what, what, what I thought was just was a really hard. I, what I felt like it was a command, like honor your father and mother. Like I, the whole reason for breaking up was I wanted to honor her father, and 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 then the door just ended up closing for good after that. Um, and so, you know, I I don't look back with regret at that at no. all. No, 
I'm just That's glad it. where God took me. I was going to ask you quickly too about the whole uh, three month trip to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people go off to a place like that mm -hmm. and um, their mindset, their worldview almost gets completely shifted, right? Like there's people in this world who live different, like completely yeah. different than we do. Then they come back feeling like you, you know, <laughs> lukewarm soft yes. Christians you can't live a hard day in your life and yeah we out there we could hardly have a shower and all that kind of stuff now we come here and everybody's mm -hmm. just kind of sitting around out there when they worship everybody's into it and right um <clears throat> yeah I, I guess my my experience there like I lived in a small town and I wouldn't say that we ha faced hardship but but they lived very differently very simply right yeah uh, well maybe not the people in town like everybody Everybody had a, had a ph cell phone. All the kids, all the then already. Oh, yeah, even all the kids had a cell phone, uh, texting all the time. They're on Facebook. They would have. Uh, I don't think they always had uh, data, so they had this uh, internet cafe oh, yes. in the center of town, and the kids would often hang out there, right? The youth, um, and uh, but when we would go into the mountains, uh, that was different. The, 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 there, it was a lot more. Um, I guess the, the folks there lived a lot harder lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and part of that was just because of the terrain. You were, they were building on slopes that that trying to farm up there and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, but but I remember so, lighthouse being a more of a traditional Mennonite, still vibe evangelical, but still having a little bit more traditional conservative vibe. Uh, I out there was it was a Pentecostal uh, church that we were very charismatic. Yeah. Yeah, it was right. So I was exposed to things that I had never been exposed to, um, out there. A uh, lot more animated worship, uh, which which was good for me. I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, for the most part, I enjoyed it. Sometimes I felt it was unnecessarily loud. Yeah. Um, we o had Overly emotional. Yeah, overly emotional. Um, I felt like some of the expressions of the spirit working in people were just... Uh, this is my impression, that, that it was manufactured to, to actually get the actual thing yeah. kind of thing. Um, but yeah, they'd have a room that was maybe the size of a single car garage or a little bigger, and they had and the back wall was just stacked floor to ceiling with speakers. And I thought to myself, like, really? <laughs> like, the, 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 this is crazy. But but this is how they did church, yeah. right? Um, uh, but and it was good for me. The the part that I remember the most is uh, walking away from that, uh, coming back here. Like, uh, we can live with less and be just as happy. Yeah. Uh, and and that was something that I thought about a lot. That's good. Um, and for me, I thought I was going to move back for the first three months. Okay. And, like, you almost get disillusioned with normal life then, right? It's I did. Like, there's yeah. a ministry to be had right yeah. there. Exactly. So then you guys, uh, you got married, and now you have five, 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 I was gonna five say children. Five children, yeah. yeah. Ranging from age... 11 to three months 11 to three months yeah. wow you guys got a little baby yeah and obviously from from port burwell you guys have transitioned over to tilsonburg to beacon there and you've been mm -hmm. serving somewhat there as well teaching some lessons and whatnot yeah so uh, i guess the first the first thing I, I helped out with there was song leading when we were more towards the beginning when the church got started uh you went to beacon and right away yeah yeah we were there the first sunday that they started uh, and have been there ever since. Mm -hmm. We we were living in Tilsonburg at the time, so we just said makes sense. It makes sense. We wanted to be part of something new. But we thought it'd be great to help help us uh, establish a church, uh, the new church plant, and uh, and so that was a decision we made right away. It wasn't we're gonna try it out. We're like we're gonna we're gonna go and help out. And we're gonna nice. make. Yeah, it must have been out. exciting. It, it, it was. It was. Yeah. Um, small group. Do you remember? What, do you remember what year it was? Uh, yeah, 2011. 2011. Uh, no, no, so sorry, 2012. 2012. So it's like 11 years now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I remember because our daughter was the first baby born. Okay. Uh, in, in the church. Yeah. Nice. The, the so you were song first. Yeah. Song leading, then serving on the board of trustees, uh, teaching young teens there as well, uh, and then now as of late, um, doing adult Sunday school teaching just occasionally. I don't have. I'm not regular, but just occasionally. That's and cool. part of the men's ministry there. And still looking for opportunities to share the gospel with folks? You know, I, I feel like I, I've I've gotten comfortable just doing it in church. Like okay. uh, that's that's a confession of mine. Like I, I feel like I've gotten just too comfortable that's doing easy it in church. To do, yeah. It is, yeah. You're preaching to the choir is easy, you're not gonna get flack. You might generally. get some new faces in there that need to hear the gospel. Yeah. But yeah, I get it. Yeah. And so um 
actually uh, quite a bit as of late I've been thinking about that like I, I need to I need to get over the fact or get over the fear of um, just making that a regular habit mm -hmm. um, because I've I've gotten kind of custom just to doing it in church. Interesting. For me, I, I work from home. I, we homeschool. I'm a homesteader, all that kind of stuff. So it's very yeah. easy just to be at home. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I very first time started making videos and I posted a video online, mm -hmm. I had that same type of nervousness that you get the first time you approach somebody on the street. Oh, wow. It's okay. like I'm intruding into somebody's life or do, who do I think that I am, that I have something to offer or something mm -hmm. special. The more I thought it, the more I realized you know, the, the street corner used to be the town square. That was where you let people know the news of the day. Yeah. Now, yeah. what's what's the street corner now? What's the town center? It's the Internet. Yeah, I, exactly. I don't think we should replace interaction, face-to-face -face interaction with Internet stuff, but why would I not take this opportunity? Mm -hmm. I can share the gospel here from my home, yeah. put it on the Internet, and sometimes hundreds of people mm -hmm. click on it and watch at least a part of it. Right. And so many of them don't know the gospel or are just learning the gospel. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to get over myself, get over this, like, well, what if people think you're proud? What if you look this way? Okay, I might. Right. That's fine. Oh, but and I'm sure gospel, you get trolls too, right? Sure, people yeah. that don't like it or whatever, yeah. right? Or people who just think I'm trying to be something. And my motives are never 100% pure. Maybe I do have some selfish motives, right. but I'm not going to let my potential downfall stopped me from sharing the gospel with people who need to hear it. So mm -hmm. that was my way of saying, okay, I'm at least going to share the gospel some way, somehow, right? Yeah, now. well, and good on you. I think it's had a, a really good outreach so far. I've heard it's lots been... of people that, that, that have tuned in. Cool. Yeah. Right on. So what's uh, the future? you got a business now. You've got several employees. I had uh, Benny over the other day. He works for you. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, We've got a couple people, work, or I've got three guys that work for me right now. Um, I I don't know what the future holds. I, 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 I guess I lack in planning. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know what the next five yeah, years, six idea, years looks like. The idea of missions is all and all that is still on your mind? You still love it, the idea of reaching the world, that kind of thing? Yeah, um, it, it, it has, right? Uh, I... Maybe I'm too caught up in, well, where would I go? And that's maybe not as important as, are you willing to go? Uh, but but I, I I do think that missions is ultimately in the future. Uh, really? Still, even for you personally? I, I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to serve at Beacon. Okay. I'm happy to serve at a local church. I actually am more comfortable with that now than I have ever been. Yeah. Um, I guess when you're young, you, you romanticize about going far away. Yeah, I did the same. Exotic, right? Places. <clears throat> But I, I'm happy to serve uh, at, a, at a local church for the rest of my life. Like, there's definitely a need, mm -hmm. and and I'm and I'm the guy that, like, I'm the yes guy. I don't know if you've ever heard that term. Yeah. Um, somebody asks me to do something, you know, nine sure. nine times out of ten, I would say, yeah, I'll do it. Like, I I, I want to help. I, yep. I'm I would love to put my hand to the plow as as, as far as that goes. I, I I'm prone nice. to helping out. So that's cool. I had Greg Clausen in here on Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, he's off to Mexico, hopefully, in a month. Okay. He's still looking for a little bit of funds to kind of get him to the point where Ethnos will allow him to go. I see. So it's a bit of a tricky situation, but here's a guy who's willing to take his wife and his six daughters and move down into the way south in Mexico and yeah. just start something completely fresh. And it looks crazy, right? Some people look at it and say, why, why would I support that? Yeah. The world needs the gospel. The whole world needs the gospel. Exactly. Right? And so here's a guy who's willing to live that crazy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. Right. Okay. So why not support this guy, right? Why yeah. not get behind it? Exactly. I mean, if God calls me to something, hopefully I'd be willing to submit to it. Mm -hmm. But here's a guy who clearly feels like he's called to do it and his wife's on board. And That's like, awesome. And, and you know, it's funny, actually. He's the one that sort of revi revived that, that desire to do missions passion. in my heart. Yeah, yeah he nice. came to speak at our church uh, it's a couple months back at least yep. now, but but uh, I remember thinking as he's speaking, I'm like, remember you know, when I, that was there? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, and he's going to an area close to where I was. That's like, right. like I'm thinking to myself, like, should I get in behind this guy and like follow him out there? Like that yeah. that that question went through my mind, right? And so maybe the future has that. I don't know yet, but uh, at this time, I think it'll be faithfully serving in the church where we are now, Amen. and and I think. Uh, to the degree that I'm willing to serve the Lord, uh, I'm going to start sharing the gospel more in, in public when I am out in public. And with your co-workers and you know, the guys that work for you, that kind of stuff, right? There's always opportunities if we look for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, cool. 
Well, if, was there anything else in specific that you had hoped to touch on? or No, you know what? I was going to let you guide the conversation. Cool. I figured uh, this is something that you're more familiar with, that I'd let you uh, ask the questions and I would answer, the, uh, no, cool. answer them. Right? I'm, so. I'm inspired and encouraged by the conversation, so hopefully it's a blessing to the people listening too. Yeah, awesome. No, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks. No problem.